Hi everybody, Doug Daniel again from PrivatePilotTrainingOnline.org. I'm going to show you the safest and easiest way to land an airplane. This technique works in the most extreme circumstances that your airplane can land. This is a landing. Well, I know it's really not a landing, and it doesn't look like a landing. You, you see, we don't actually land airplanes. We put our airplanes into a pre-landing attitude at the right point over the runway in the proper airspeed. This is the proper pre-landing attitude for a crosswind blowing from the left. I'm about to show you how to get to the right point in space at the proper airspeed, attitude, and configuration. When you master these skills, you will have landings down cold, guaranteed. Here is a landing approach with the airplanes drawn to scale. Now I'm going to make them a little bigger so it will be easy for you to see. The wind blows from the left. If you point down the runway with your wings level, you're going to be blown off to the right. If you turn into the wind enough to stay over the runway, your wheels will be pointed in the wrong direction. When you touch down, you will be skidding sideways. The inherent stability of a nose wheel equipped airplane will partially point you down the runway, but with the unnecessary wear to the landing gear. The inherent instability of a tail wheel equipped airplane will try to turn you around backwards. That's called a ground loop. And you will be in for a pretty exciting landing. In a stronger crosswind, even nose wheel equipped airplanes demand proper technique. You might drive off the runway in the direction you were pointed or strike your wingtip on the ground. In a tail wheel equipped airplane, you can expect for your insurance premiums to go up. The solution is to cross control. I'm going to show you how. This is just one of the stages, one of the techniques that you need to learn to get to that final pre-landing state. I will go through all of the steps in a moment, but first I want you to understand cross-controlling. Our objective is to move the airplane down the runway, centered over it, and aligned with it. You are going to do that by sliding sideways at the same speed through the air that the wind is trying to push you off the runway. The net result is you stay directly over the runway. First, you bank the airplane to the left. Now you can see from this diagram that lift is perpendicular to the wings. So when you bank to the left, lift is now pulling you to the side as well as lifting the airplane up. This will cause the airplane to start sliding sideways to the left. Unfortunately, the airplane has a vertical tail that resists sideways motion. It will swing the nose to the left too. We don't want that. We want the wheels to be pointed exactly the same direction we are traveling when we touch down. I keep saying we. You're going to be in the airplane. I'll be sitting here talking to you. But, okay. The rudder moves the nose left and right. So you push on the right rudder pedal with your right foot to point the airplane down the runway. Now, if you've never flown before, let me tell you that you push with your right foot to get the nose to go right, you push with your left foot to get the nose to go left. Since the aileron and elevator are both controlled by hand using either a stick or a wheel, you use your hand to keep the airplane banked into the wind enough to stay centered over the runway. And you use your hand to control your height above the runway or your airspeed or whatever. Okay. When I first started teaching flying, I wasn't terribly confident. So I did pretty much what other instructors did. But, you know, I was completely blown away when I discovered that they did not teach their students to cross control on every landing. It is not unusual for a student to become a licensed pilot before encountering a strong enough crosswind to force him to use or her to use this technique. That's a recipe for disaster, I know. As a new pilot, I had had some hair-raising experiences 
before I mastered cross wind landings. Once, only blind fool luck kept me out of an irrigation ditch. So, to develop good habits, I use crosswind techniques on every landing, meaning that I force myself to cross control on every landing. Needless to say, I decided to teach my students what had worked for me. The amazing thing that was when I started teaching cross controlling on every landing, my students mastered landing much more quickly. They landed with much more authority and confidence. I became a believer. Now, back to landings. Let me get you to that ideal state. We'll do this in three steps. The first step is the approach glide. This point we call short final. Your indicated airspeed will be whatever the flight manual tells it. The FAA recommends 1.3 times the stall speed in landing configuration if your manual is silent on this subject. Let me make a very important point here. To master landings quickly, you should use exactly the same indicated airspeed on every approach. Your landing gear will be down, your power very low or idle, flaps full, mixture rich, and carburetor heat on. Your wings are level. You have not yet started to cross control. You are controlling your airspeed with pitch and staying over the extended center line of the runway. You have not yet started to lift your nose to get into the landing attitude. Now you cross control your airspeed. Lower your left wing and push on the right rudder. Focus on keeping the airplane pointed down the runway with your rudder while you keep centered with ailerons and control airspeed with elevator. Here is some life-saving information. If you cannot cross control enough to stay centered and aligned, you just may not be able to make a safe crosswind landing. When you are about one wing span above the runway, start using your elevator to control your rate of descent. Ignore airspeed. Get completely out of the airplane mentally. You are now entering the second phase of a landing. The transition from approach glide to slow flight over the runway. Use the elevator much like you do the brake in your car as you approach a stop sign. The closer you get to the runway, the slower you descend toward it. The trick here is to keep properly cross-controlled as you descend. Stop your descent at about a foot above the runway. This is the final phase. Your elevator takes on a new role but you continue to keep aligned with rudder and centered with ailerons. Use your elevator to keep you off the runway. Keep flying at about a foot until one of two things happens. You stall and settle to the runway. We call this a full stall landing. Or your pitch attitude increases until it reaches the landing attitude. Once you are in the landing attitude, use the elevator to maintain that landing attitude. Since you are continuing to slow down, you're losing lift, and as you lose lift, the airplane will slowly settle onto the runway. Congratulations. Great landing. Okay, thank you for watching another video from privatepilottrainingonline.org. I covered a lot of material in a short period of time. So if you want a transcript of this video, just go to privatepilottrainingonline.org and sign in. And be sure to click the little like button below to tell your friends about all this free information. Thanks a lot. Doug Daniel from privatepilottrainingonline.org. See you again soon.